afternoon, everybody. Today, during our daily meditation with Olga Kostrova and... Jan Hutchins. Hi, Jan Hutchins. Jan Hutchins. Uh, we will talk about another subject that came to us today. And the subject is self-control, discipline, and willpower. Jan, let me ask you this question. Please go ahead first, and then I will welcome your questions. In all words, when you notice it all the time as much as I do, one thing is to know what you do, and another thing is actually do that. A lot of our clients experience challenge with they call willpower. Sometimes they say, but I don't have willpower. If there's something to do and it's not my emotional priority, if I don't get right away um, immediate emotional benefits, I just don't have willpower to do it. Some people have strong, stronger tendencies to escape, and some people uh, do a better job. So my question to you, what do you see the foundation of developing self-control? And why is it so hard for some people while easy for another? Or is it circumstantial? Just share your thoughts. It's our daily meditation, so let's meditate on that. Hmm. First thing that comes up is habits, patterns of a life. What did I learn growing up about the delayed gratification and working through a series of steps to get to a goal? Um, I also recognize that there is a, a great degree of fear in myself and others around I don't want to engage in something if I have even a, an unconscious belief that I won't succeed. Uh, for men especially, I think it's for men especially, we are given the impression that we're supposed to be powerful, effective, get things done, do it. And that if that had not been my, my pattern, if that wasn't my experience as a younger person, for one reason or another, whether I was reading impaired or had a learning disability or a teacher who didn't uh, speak politely to me, or you know, who knows what the wound was, parents that were overly uh, uh, demanding, all these ways in which I might have had bad experiences, I have a habit avoiding the pain of failing by not having the willpower, applying willpower to get it. It's a whole other issue to then say with that pattern in history, what do I do to change that? And that's another question if you want to take a hit at it, or at least to respond to what I said already. I'll, I'll see if I can come up with what I think is a reasonable response to that situation. Mm -hmm. So so you what I said? Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that? Do you have a response to what I just said or a, a reflection on it? Uh, there is not necessarily a response because I do agree with everything you said. Um, all I can do is just reflect, reflect on how I see that. And I want to be very honest, I'm a little bit puzzled to actually um, imply in any degree that I know would be a lie, so I puzzled with how exactly um, willpower is developed because, for example, I know that in my life everything is relying on willpower, on self-control and self-discipline, and it always was easy for me. It always was easy to restrain myself and to delay immediate gratification, so I don't think that development of it is separate from the fact that this originally was easy. I can't tell, I don't know, but I think there was something either genetically or brought up in a very early age when I could observe that it's just the way life is for me. As I observe my clients, despite all the theories that I uh, read about, there's also psychological theories about willpower. All I see, and there are a lot of books written, books, and, and some of them bestsellers, and 
I don't have I don't see answers that would be satisfactory. I see a lot of questioning of the subject, but I don't see a lot of uh, answers that are satisfactory. Before I throw my mm -hmm. my um, imaginations on about what are the answers, what the answers might be, mm -hmm. I wanted to use the experience I've had being married with you. Mm -hmm. That indeed you do have this sense of willpower that is uh, very impressive, mm -hmm. and I've always at least had the hallucination that it was partly because you grew up in a culture in which it was necessary for you starve. It could, but then I can assure you that it's not across the board even for my culture. I think that I have much stronger self-control that a lot of people that represent my culture. Even though indeed the fact that we have so much adversity and so much demand for our discipline in order to survive and thrive to any degree, uh, I still think that somehow what I have is not the common denominator. And I only can speculate through observation because theory is not interesting. I only can, I only am interested in empirical data, something that I observe and it seemed to be true because it repeats right in front of my eyes. So I can only speculate, and here's my speculation. Self-control requires energy. A lot of people don't have strong enough life force. In Eastern medicine, they would call it chi. Right? Chinese, for example, made to chi. So I know that I generate energy First of all, I do a lot of practices to generate my energy to keep it up. And secondly, I think naturally, genetically or otherwise, I just have very high energy level. At least I know that I for sure had it naturally because I didn't need any practices and I was observed by others as person with extremely high energy level. So I think that there is connection between energy level and willpower of ability to have self-control. So people with lower energy don't have enough fuel to power resistance to desire. So that's my one speculation. And if that's to be true, which probably is to whatever degree, and I bet there was a lot of theories around it too, but I just only can speak from my experience and observations. If that's to be true, what people need to do more and more is to practice consciously Anything that can bring them energy, keep the energy up. Because if you look at a lot of people, they're so down, and you can see it in the body. Life lost its um, spark, and and just everything is so hard. And right, so if everything is so hard from waking up and breathing to cooking meal, how can you have any energy to resist? And because self-control is resisting to your impulses and desires, right? So then how can you restrain yourself from everything? You need to up your energy. Exercises, better food, breathing exercises, uh, conscious, uh, conscious practices of a lot of martial arts, dance movement, you name it. Meditation, there's so many ways to, to bring your energy level up. Make love, you name it, right? We can go and talk about everything that happens in the in the body and chemistry of the brain and neurological aspect. But I don't want to go there. I want to keep it very simple, very simple. So energy level, that's one thing. Another thing that comes to mind is how strongly I want something, how determined I get that. Because if I say here is chocolate, if you eat it now, you don't get something else, right? So the question is how much I want the chocolate, and it's usually our impulses and our immediate desire, it's something that I can have immediate gratification from. But then there is another thing. If I'm restraining myself, why? Am I having strong enough desire to that other thing, right? So what I notice a lot, the other clients, that 
cannot self-control themselves enough, don't have enough opportunity or, or inner opportunity to restrain themselves well, they just don't have strong enough desire to have something else. And this is tricky because if you don't have desire, you just don't have it. Manufacturing desire is kind of interesting aspect of the conversation alone. You can manufacture desire, again, through upping your energy, from bringing your energy up and just imagining the play. But you really need to have really good imagination to imagine that thing and want yourself, want it more. Create reasons for, for yourself to want it more. Like, for example, for some people, in order to lose weight, they need to restrain themselves from consuming that much food or that much bad food. Just simple, simple things about just, just dieting, right? At least that. If I don't want actually to lose weight that much, I don't think I'll do all those complicated stuff. So I need to eat consciously if I really kind of want it but not strongly enough. I need to figure out how to create enough motivation, enough supporting wishes and desires around the subject of weight loss. I, mu I must want it more than I want it now. Then I have much more opportunity, the foundation for self-restraining. Does it make sense? And a lot of people don't really work around want things stronger. They know that it's good to have a healthier body. That's just kind of good to have it. But they don't have motivation high enough. So if that's the case, which probably is, how would you, Jen, solve that? Mm -hmm.